Have you ever heard about the rule of thirds? Well, you may have heard of it in the past, but don't know what it is. Or maybe you've studied it in the past, but forget about it. The rule of thirds is the foundation of photographic composition. And in this video, we're going to go through a few different options for you to get amazing photographic compositions, whether it be a landscape or even a portrait. So if you're ready, let's begin. One of the big problems is that many people compose their photos so the main subject, like a person, is put in the dead center of the frame. But the rule of thirds suggests that people or your main subject matter should be on the side on one of the vertical thirds. Now the history of this goes way back to the Greeks, especially Aristotle. He suggested that people or subjects look best when they're on the third and viewers appreciate that much more. Now the way to visually understand the rule of thirds is to think of a grid with two vertical and two horizontal lines going through the picture space dividing things up into nine equal sized rectangles. For example, the video operator has placed me in such a composition where I follow the rule of thirds. A great tip to help you compose using the rule of thirds is to use a grid overlay that's on your LCD screen. Now, older cameras may not have this ability, but newer ones usually do, and it's usually found in your menu items. Now let's take a look at some photo examples of the rule of thirds in action. So when talking about the rule of thirds, there are two main ways to utilize the rule of thirds in your photography. Let's go through some examples. The first thing that we notice is that the ocean and sky are pretty much in the middle of the photo on the horizontal. This is not ideal with regards to the rule of thirds. What we'll do is we'll crop the picture so that the line of ocean meeting sky is on the lower third. Doesn't that look much better? In our next photo, we have a picture of a cathedral in the middle of a street between two buildings. As you can see, the edges of the buildings are perfectly on the vertical third lines. This is a well-balanced picture and it looks good. In our next photo of a bamboo grove in Japan, the bamboo shoot is on the left vertical third, while the rest of the scene, which are the blurry bamboo shoots, are all occupying the rest of the picture. This is a nice composition, and it really adds to the sense of peace that you would find in a Japanese Zen garden. In our next picture, everything comes together. In this shot taken in Tokyo, what we have is three horizontal sections, as well as three vertical sections. This is a rare example, almost like a tic-tac-toe board, where we can plainly see all of the horizontal and vertical lines, almost like a grid, that make up the rule of thirds. So to recap, when you're dealing with segments or sections of a photo that are on a vertical or horizontal plane, using the rule of thirds is really effective. If you have a section that's horizontal, well, feel free to place it on one of the thirds. If you have a section that's vertical, the same thing applies. This sort of tic-tac-toe grid works really well visually to help your photos become amazing. The second way to deal with rule of thirds is to place your objects on the intersecting points. And what this is, is a combination of vertical and horizontal lines where there are four points in the picture space where the lines intersect. And these four points are usually really good to place your subject, whether it be a still life or a person or anything in the environment. Let's take a look at this apple. Currently, the apple is placed dead center in the picture. While this is okay at times, it doesn't really follow the rule of thirds. Take a look at this next picture where we've changed the position of the apple. This time, the apple is in the position of the intersecting points. As you can see, it's on the left, vertical, and the top, horizontal. This intersecting point is a really good place to place the apple. Let's take a look at this pumpkin picture. Unlike the previous photo of the apple, this pumpkin is on a different intersecting point. Remember that you can place your object on any of the four intersecting points. In our next photo, we have a portrait of a person in an environment. 
As you can see, the person's face is on one of the intersecting points. Also, they're looking into the picture space, which allows for a greater visual flow from left to right. So remember, when doing portraits, it's always good to have a bit of breathing space in front of the subject and to have the intersecting point pretty much right on their eye. In this next photo, taken in Japan, we can see that both principles come together nicely. The top two-thirds of the picture space are the mountains in the background. The bottom one-third of the picture space is the castle and the trees. However, we also have an intersecting point, and the castle itself occupies one of the intersecting points. Have you ever heard of the old statement, learn the rules before you break them? This certainly applies in composition. So far you've learned the fundamentals of composition through the rule of thirds. Now you can learn to break them. Here's a great example. Take a look at this photo of a person on a farm. She is purposely looking out of the frame, which is pretty much exactly opposite to what we suggested. This is a very effective emotional technique for conveying a sense of loss, of introspection, of melancholy. The viewers will appreciate the fact that she's looking back in time or longing for something that she doesn't have. Thank you for watching this video on the Rule of Thirds. I really hope you got a lot out of it and you are now prepared to take amazing photos using the fundamental principles of the Rule of Thirds, whether it be photographing people using horizontal or vertical intersecting lines, or whether it be landscapes by using horizontal or vertical sections of the photo. Regardless of your subject, the rule of thirds can help you, and I'm really looking forward to you advancing in your photographic art because of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you got a lot of value out of it. Now, there's so much more I'd like to tell you about digital photography. And while I didn't hold anything back, there's only so much I could really share with you in such a short video. And that's why I've recorded an entire video course about incredible photos with your digital camera. So if you'd like to find out more about my digital photography course, you'll find more information right under this video. So take a look at my full digital photography course, and I hope to see you there.